Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, 
the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were, in the same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, highest and, on and on earth peace, peace good will toward men.
O holy night, O glorious light that shines on Bethlehem town, O music sweet that from the skies comes floating softly down, the echo of the angel's song falls on our ears again. All glory be to God on high, and peace, goodwill to men. The shepherds heard, like note of bird, that midnight carol clear, and to the manger and the babe in awe and love drew near. And as they gazed, the heavenly strain rang in their hearts again. All glory be to God on high, and peace, goodwill to men. Twas service sweet, twas homage meet for lowly men to pay. And we, our hearts' obeisance made upon this Christmas day. We join ye angel choristers as ye repeat again. All glory be to God on high, and peace, goodwill to men. O holy night, O glorious light that shines on Bethlehem town. O music sweet that from the skies comes floating softly down. We catch the golden cadences and fling them back again. All glory be to God on high, and peace, goodwill to men. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul. Okay. 
let's show our appreciation to the choir tonight for their work. I want to share just a thought with you about this Christmas season, and I would invite you as well, following our service tonight, which will be done in just a few moments, we have a reception. I didn't mention that earlier in the announcements, but we're going to have a reception next door. Uh, things are already provided. All you need to do is show up. Just some, uh, some light refreshments, give us time to fellowship. Certainly appreciate our faithful folks being here, and then a number of guests as well. We appreciate you coming to be a part of that, and we'd love to be able to fellowship with you further along. I want to share a thought, which I believe is, uh, goes right along with our theme, but the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I know when I thought about Christmas and anticipated Christmas as a, as a boy, uh, admittedly, what I was excited about was the gifts. Now, as I've become older, more mature, have a family, what I get excited about now is the gifts. Uh, uh, there's no question there's an excitement about gifts, and I believe it's appropriate that we give gifts at Christmas time because obviously God gave the gift of His Son. This verse talks about the gift of salvation. So certainly as we think about Christmas, it is a time for giving and for receiving gifts. If you do have someone that you love that you give a gift to, certainly you understand the words of the Lord Jesus that it If there's something we really want, um, we're at a point where we may be able to eventually to get that. If, it's with, if it was within reason that somebody else could buy it for you, certainly probably you could get it. And yet there's still something about someone thinking of you, uh, giving it some thought, looking ahead, and buying you something that they think perhaps that you would enjoy. But when I think about the gift of salvation, the gift of God is eternal life. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, and I think about God giving this gift to man, there's a couple of things that come to my mind about gifts. Now these, of course, apply to a gift that I would give to someone, but they also are true of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when I think about a gift, if it's going to be effective, if you really want it to accomplish its purpose, it ought to be a thoughtful gift. I remember when I believe it was Josh when he was young. I'm pretty sure that it was him because it was a while back. But one of his friends, I think, had, uh, had given him a gift and he was going to return the favor. So he goes in his room, picks out a used toy, and he's going to wrap this thing up and give it to his friend. Of course, I caught what he was doing, and I said, what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to give this to my friend. He gave me a gift. Of course, his was brand new in the box, whatever. And I said, no, you're not going to give him that. He said, it's okay. I don't want it anyway. <laughs> now, you understand that a gift is not nearly as meaningful if it's not a thoughtful gift certainly means more when I look at a gift I get it and I thought well somebody put some thought into that even more so perhaps than the dollar amount you've gotten it before perhaps you've given it uh, you had to come up with a gift quickly and you got one two years ago that you hadn't even taken out of the box or used you wrapped it back up gave it to someone else just make sure the clearance price is still not on there with a date and so forth uh, but you know that those thoughtful gifts are not quite as meaningful but think about the gift that God gave to this world through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a thoughtful gift. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, For ye are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, received by tradition from your fathers from their vain conversation, but with the precious blood of Christ, which verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That is, before God ever created man, He looked down through the corridor of time, saw what man would be like, and he said, here is a gift that they need. It is the gift of my son and his shed blood on the cross. He looked at man, looked at his corruption, saw our heart, saw where we would be before him, and a loving God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I dare say that God's gift was a thoughtful gift. But you know, I think about a gift as well. Certainly not unrelated to that. A gift ought to be an appropriate gift. Now, this wasn't on their, their fault, and I was a young boy myself. I didn't fully understand it, and I still remember this. I, don't, I was probably five, six, seven years old, and my neighbors that uh, lived there in our neighborhood, we would exchange inexpensive gifts. Of course, my parents bought them, and we would give them back and forth, to, um, and the neighbors brought our little package of gifts over. Well, I had two sisters, and they distributed them out. Here's the one for Wendy. Here's the one for Sandy. Here's the one for Frankie, okay? 
And so I open up my gift that day. I'm all excited. Don't know what they bought me. Maybe a, some jacks or a ball or whatever it is. I open it up, and it's women's underwear. <laughs> now, I didn't put two and two together. That they had put the wrong name on the, the gift or whatever. I kind of looked at it and tried to act thankful and smiled and thought, <laughs> not sure what I'm going to do with that. Now, admittedly, that gift, had they intended to do that, would not be an appropriate gift for a six-year-old boy. I didn't think it was appropriate, didn't have anything to use it for. But when I think of the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I think of what God gave to this world, it was an appropriate gift. Because you understand this world has a deep need. God recognizes the need in this world because we have in our heart a separation from God because of sin. The Bible says our iniquities have separated us between us and our God. Our sin has hid his face from you. All we need to do is look at the corruption of the world and understand the murder, the violence, the rebellion, the revelry, the pride, the whatever it is that corrupts this world came from a root of sin that's in our heart. Now when Jesus Christ came, he did not come simply to clean things up. He came to deal with the root problem, which is sin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, at the end of this world, Jesus Christ appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of of himself Jesus gave us an appropriate gift he saw the need man is lost he's separated from God his need is great and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so it was a thoughtful gift it was an appropriate gift but then also it was a costly gift now you know a gift doesn't have to be costly to be a nice gift sometimes just the fact that it was thoughtful just the fact that it was appropriate but I guess we'd all admit we like to get a costly gift. Now certainly if we were to look at the gift of God, we know that the gift was costly, but what makes a gift a costly gift? You know, I heard the story, and I've heard it from a couple of different sources. Both of them were preachers, so it's got to be the truth. But I heard that uh, a man broke down in New Jersey. His uh, car, or actually he was riding by a limousine that was broke down. The tire was flat. And this guy's riding by, and his... Uh, four-wheel drive jacked up pickup you know just the salt of the earth type guy sees the guy broke down the chauffeur's out there trying to fix the tire and is uh, you know he seems like he's having some trouble so this big old uh, four-wheel truck redneck jumps out of it hey buddy you having trouble well yeah I am having some trouble I can't get this tire changed well the guy comes over helps him get the spare helps him break the lugs uh, you know jacks up this limousine fixes the tire the chauffeur's very thankful and uh, the guy says, oh, no problem. He goes to jump back in his truck, and the chauffeur calls him back. says, hey, my boss wants to talk to you. There's a driver in the back of the car, or the, the, the boss was in the back of the car. So the guy goes back, lowers the window, says, man, I really appreciate your helping do that. Uh, is there something I could do for you? Could I, could I pay you for your trouble? No, sir, I don't want any, any pay. I just want to be a help. No problem at all. He said, look, isn't there, isn't there something I could do for you? Well, no, no, not at all. He says, well, look, um, when's, your, when's your anniversary? Well, it just so happens it's so-and-so. He says, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'd like to send your wife some flowers just to show you some appreciation. Can you give me your address? Well, man, that would be nice. Yeah, she'd appreciate that. So he gave the address to this guy. Uh, wasn't too long after he got back home, a few days, few weeks, whatever, a set of flowers come. Happy anniversary. By the way, I also paid the mortgage off on your house. Now, it turned out that was Donald Trump that did that for this guy. <laughs> Donald Trump was the one that was broke down, and he's the one who did this for this fellow, paid his house off. Now, that would be a generous gift. But you know what? If you got $10 billion, that really wasn't a costly gift. It didn't cost him that much. And don't get me wrong, if he'd like to do that for me, I'd be perfectly fine. <laughs> but if you got $10 billion to maybe throw out a couple of hundred thousand, it's a generous gift. He certainly was not mandated that he would do it, but really... It didn't cost him that much. Now, God is the God of heaven. What if he had created a person and said, uh, the world has a need. Sin needs to be dealt with. I'm going to create a special creature, uh, the greatest angel that's ever been, with all power and might and discernment and wisdom, and I'm going to send that created person down to the earth and let them accomplish salvation. Well, if, first of all, biblically, we understand that wouldn't have done the job, but that would not have been a costly gift. It would have been generous. It would have been great that God thought about us. We would have been impressed that God loved us enough to do something about it, but it wouldn't have been costly. But what it took for God to provide salvation, 
is he sent his only begotten son to this world who became a man, walked this earth in a body of human flesh, and 2 Corinthians 5.21 says it like this, He who knew no sin, the sinless Son of God, was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When I think about the gift of God, I realize that God sent his only begotten Son. What a great cost. He who was rich for your sakes became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. It was a great sacrifice for Jesus to come. For the only one who could die for my sin is the Son of God. He's the only one who had power to become a man, literally in the fullness of time. He sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. You know, I thank God for Christmas time. I thank God for gifts. I'm thankful for the spirit of Christmas, that we get excited. We want to give a gift to our children. We like to give a gift to our spouse. We don't mind getting a couple of gifts ourselves. But it reminds us at this Christmas time that we have a thoughtful gift, our Lord Jesus Christ. We have an appropriate gift, our Lord Jesus and his salvation. And we have a costly gift. He gave himself to die for me. He rose again from the dead, and he's able to save. Hey, at this Christmas time, I can't think of a more appropriate gift for you to receive than the gift of salvation through our Lord. Let's have a word of prayer tonight. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and we're going to pray. And as we consider tonight the gift that God has given, I wonder tonight if there are folks who have not received that gift. You know about him, you're familiar with him, but do you know him yourself? Have you received that gift tonight? You know, I'm going to have a word of prayer, and if I could pray for you tonight, I certainly wouldn't point you out or embarrass you or come to you. God knows your heart. But if you'd say, would you remember me in that prayer? I do not know that I've received Christ in that way, but I'd like you to pray for me. Would you slip a hand up that I could pray for you tonight? Anyone like that at all? I'll simply remember a raised hand in the prayer. God, we'd ask you to work in all our hearts tonight. You know the need. As you look out across this auditorium, Probably most of us have received that gift and experienced the wonderful gift of eternal life. Perhaps there are those tonight, no doubt there could be, even some perhaps by way of live stream as well, who do not personally know the Lord Jesus and the joy of receiving the gift of God. Would you work in those hearts tonight? Would you make it evident, make it clear? Lead, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand tonight to your feet? We are going to end in just a moment with a song, and I am going to give opportunity for our Senior citizens, you define that. If you need a little extra time getting over, certainly we've got some that that would be beneficial to. If you need some extra time, as we sing, we're going to let you head on over and get started with our fellowship. We'll follow that up as we finish a stanza of this song. If I can be a help to you spiritually, I'll take time. We don't have to go to fellowship. You catch me, pull me aside, I'll be shaking hands. I'd love to be able to talk with you about your spiritual need if I can be a help to you beyond this service. Let's go ahead, sing a stanza of Away in a Manger, and then we'll be dismissed, and if our senior citizens want to make their way out at this point. <laughs> 